What's up, fellas? It's Mark Parson, cornerback pro, former NFL cornerback of the Houston Texans and the New Orleans Saints. And uh, I got this clip. It's literally one clip. And I wanted to show the Browns some love because they're on hard knocks. Um, this is going to be Jarvis Landry versus Janoris Jenkins, which I actually have a video on Janoris Jenkins, and he balled out in that video. Um, uh, but this one, I do want to show you. Here's what I want to show you guys. It's the, it's the difference between staying square and opening the gate. Now, here's the thing. There's a clip from a Browns cornerback that one of my guys sent me in their training camp. And I think it was the rookie who got drafted first round from Ohio State. He's a very athletic guy. He opened the gate. It was down. It was like down here at the bottom. He opened the gate. Um, and the receiver ran, I think, a stutter comeback or a comeback. And he got the pick or the breakup, one of the two. And my guy sent it to me, and it's like, okay, here's the thing. Um, it wasn't an extremely great route by the receiver, but, you know, it's, at the end of the day, it's in the NFL. So everybody's good for the most part. But <clears> – <throat> What I'm just saying is, like, you, you'll make some plays. So don't get me wrong, all right? You'll make some plays if you just open the gate. Remember, when I was in college, I, I actually did it. I did that. I opened the gate the whole year. I did an inside kick step technique, and then I opened the gate, and I made plays all year. The thing is, when you, when you meet your match, so I was, you know, just basically better than other guys, right? But when we played Central Michigan, I met my match. And my thing is, when you go against the top receivers, all right, you're not going to be able to do that. If you open the gate, he's going to get to the top of his stem. And if you have a good quarterback and you have a good receiver, they're going to eat you alive the whole game. That's why it's very important, especially if you're going against a fast guy, especially if he's good, you need to stay square as long as possible. All right, you need to do the techniques. And like I said, we teach that. I teach that. But you need to do one of the techniques, so have a plan with what you're going to do. And then you need the whole goal, and we're, we're going to be at the top right here. This is Janoris, and this is uh, Jarvis Landry. Um, but you want to disrupt the timing of the quarterback and him. You can play in sachet. You can do whatever you, know, whatever, you know, you want to do, depending on the scheme and what you, you know, you're taking away. But you need to stay square. So if he does an outside release, his release should be out here. Like, his release should come upfield. You should get at least one or two shuffles in, and then immediately you strike his hands, his eyes, feet, hands. You strike, and then when you're running with him, you're squeezing the whole way so he won't have his space. Let me show you right here. So immediately you'll see Jarvis Landry uh, open up the gate tremendously, and he squeezes at the very end, but it's a little bit too late. And the thing is, Tyrod Taylor's getting hit when he throws it. So I'm just telling you, like you guys, you guys who play, uh, you know, high school ball or college ball, the NFL is a different level. So let me make sure you can see this. Actually, I'll just play it again. But look, so look, I'm not saying you're not going to be with the guy. You know, I'm not saying you're not going to be with the guy. You can, some guys you can run with right there. The thing is, the receiver gets to the top of his stem. And that's a good job. I mean, that's a, that's a good job of uh, Jarvis Landry being aware. And then Tyrod Taylor, you know, really, Tyrod Taylor, if he didn't get hit, he would have threw it even more out here. But that's why we don't want to open the gate and just run with guys because he's able to take the. I mean, look, we, he didn't even have to take a weak shoulder right here. He just immediately gets up the field, and then he does a good job. Matter of fact, he probably could have stacked just a tad bit more, but I don't think he was expecting him to, to open a gate that much. He got his hand off him. Then you see that how he, he attempts at the very end to, to come into him to, like, uh, basically hold that line. I'm talking about the receiver. And then create some space for himself out here. See, really, we should be squeezing the whole way. And it's. It starts at the very beginning. So it's the little things like this that adds to a lot. You see that immediately opens the gate. And you're like, well, coach, he's on him. He's on him, coach, what you mean? He's on him, man. We just got to make a play at the end. I'm telling you, it starts at the beginning. It's eyes, feet, hands. What do we do with our eyes? Eyes on his waist. He probably had that. 
But I'm telling you, if we always, let's say we just do a regular technique. Let's just say inside kick step. Jarvis didn't even give us that much. All right. So inside kick step, we see him do outside release. We take two shuffles, shuffle, shuffle, pop them. Jarvis is going to be right here instead of right here. He's going to be over here. And then we immediately squeeze. So we immediately start to squeeze him. Then he's going to be out here. That, that mess around be a pick because Tyrod's getting hit. Look, we immediately squeeze. So I'm just, I just want to like, when you get to the higher level, when you guys start getting, I mean, obviously, if you know, if you learn this stuff, if you learn this stuff early on, if you learn as early as possible, right, if you watch all these videos, you'll start to pick up on it and you'll be able to be like, you know, this is what I did wrong. This is what I did right. And I can improve on it. But if you, if you do certain things, because maybe you saw some other, somebody else do it, right? And you think that you're playing well, but then when you get to the Nike opening, if you're a high school, if you're, you go to the Nike opening and you're going against better guys who are more athletic than you, and you're like, Dad, I can't guard any of that's what <laughs> That's what happened to me when I was in the MAC championship game going against, uh, well, I think his name was Damian Linden, man, Linson or somebody. Man, this dude was crushing me, man. This is killing and um, I really didn't understand until I went back and watched the film. I was like, yo, coach, I'm just opening the gate. He's like, yeah, you need to. He was like, you need another technique. <laughs> and you need to stay square. But I didn't really get it until later. So hopefully you guys can get it early. Now, if you're in college, same thing, man. You know, you may be balling out guarding these guys where you just open the gate, just run with guys. You get to this NFL, you start guarding, uh, guarding guys like Odell Beckham and, and the elite guys uh, like Landry. And, um, you know, even like you go back in history, you start, you got guys like T.O., <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, Calvin Johnson, especially Ocho. Ocho, like Ocho, when, bro, Ocho Cinco, that's Chad Johnson I'm talking about. Man, if you watch his film, which I watched a lot of him, man, like, bro, you have no chance. If you don't get your hands on him early, you have no chance because he's getting out of his break in one step. I mean, you know when the guys get out of it, when they run into the comeback, he's not taking a whole bunch of steps to get out where you can gather. And, nah, it's huh. I mean, he's dropping his hips in one, breaking out of one, and he's making that money. He had Carson, uh, what's his name, Carson Palmer. He had a good quarterback. So I want to get you guys prepared to be elite at this and guard the top guys in your city, the state, and the world. My goal is for you guys to be the best in the world. So understand that. I want you to be able to see it. See how it looks? Matter of fact, I think the guy on the other side does a really good job. And I Okay, okay. I like it. Um I wanna I want you to see the other guy on the other side of this play. And I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna let it play one more time fully so you can see Tyrod getting hurt hit. And we just opened the gate right there. Good receiver. Good job by Landry, yo. That's a good job. So let's watch. Now, the guy inside, look at this. You see that? How he stays square? Just, and he came right at him. Remember, I'm not a really big two hands, like jam guy, strike guy. But he did come right at him. So you can get him right, you know, in, in the middle. You can shoot two hands. But I'm more of an alternating guy, just so you don't get the hips locked. Uh, but he stays square, does a really good job on that play so you know play by play man every single play we gotta come back we gotta know what we did incorrectly know what we did right and and come back and improve you know again it's a 10,000 rep rule i guarantee you you learn my techniques you watch enough film and you do this for 10,000 reps you're going to be elite so the question is did you get your 10,000 reps in did you and were you passionate about it and did you finish it oh there's one more thing about this play almost forgot so at the very end, remember when I talk about scaling high? This is why we do it. So let's say, okay, cool. You know what? We're not going to always have perfect technique. That's just part of the game, right? I want you to. I want you to have perfect technique, but, you know, it is what it is. But how do we finish a play, even if we mess up? So watch this. I'm going to show you this. It's called scaling high. Oh, man, there's another clip I want to see. But look, if you feel, number one, we talk about ball skills. 
if you feel like the receiver has a lot of space, we got a lot of real estate over here because we didn't squeeze. Let's say we didn't squeeze that well early on. We sh you should know that. You should feel that in your mind, right? What you want to do is you want to turn towards the receiver to, to break up this pass, okay? You don't want to turn this way because this is when he kind of like pushes off or you do the back shoulder or whatever, right? Only you really want to look back this way is when you got him squeezed a lot tighter to the uh the sideline. So right here, and I'm gonna show in another clip. I, I saw somebody sent it to me earlier on uh, IG. Um, but turn towards the receiver to look back for the ball when you feel like you got a lot of space. I have a video where I said definitely if you're near the hash, I mean near the numbers, if you're near the numbers, you definitely want to look back this way, right? Now, right here near the sideline, um, definitely look through the uh, receiver. So you can kind of feel him and then look back. And just in case, like I said, the ball's over here, you'll be able to knock the, you know, strike and get the ball through. Never swipe, strike through. Never swipe for the ball when you want to break it up. Strike through. Strike through, play through the ball, okay? Um, grab a finger, grab a hand. Make He has to make an amazing catch if he's going to catch it on you, all right? With that being said, if you do look back this way, and even if you look this uh, through the receiver like I recommend, you scale high. So look how it's, whenever you turn, it's going to help a lot of you guys out in um, your ball skills and you practice this. Whenever you look back for the ball, you never look back level. Never look back level. You look back, you scale high first. So the, whenever you turn back for the ball, you 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 immediately turn, you scale high, so your eye is going to be to the sky already because most likely the trajectory of the ball is coming down, right? Especially if you're looking at the receiver and you see his eyes get big and he's about to, you know, he's telegraphing, he's about to uh, try to make a play on the ball, you definitely need to scale high first, then level out. So what does that mean? Immediately when you look back, you look high first because the ball is probably coming down like this, and then you get ready to knock it out. Now, let's say the ball, the quarterback threw it on the other side. That's okay. You scale high first, then level out. So, you see how this is? See how you kind of get the ball lost? You lose the ball in the air? Scale high. See, he's leveling. He's level. So, you don't want to immediately look level. Scale high first, then level out. I learned that in college. I learned that getting done up. <laughs> you feel me? Like... My coach, Coach David Brown, was like, yo, you can't find the ball, son. You got to scale high, then level out, son. I said, okay, cool. It helped me out from that point on, all right? So, oh, last point of the day. Uh, make sure you guys email me if you have any questions. Cornerbackpro at gmail.com. Definitely get the one-on-one -on -one mastery program. Just ask me for it, and then I'll show you. I'll tell you the process. But look, oh, this looks real bad. Maybe I shouldn't leave it right here. Hold on. All right, so guys, look, I got a comment, and I really liked it. One of the young fellas said, man, I've been, he said, I got 200 videos. I'm 200 videos in, and I'm starting to get a feel for how I can uh, critique myself. And I really liked it. That's the whole point of why I do it, because I want you to gain football IQ and know how to watch film and see how you're doing, you know, incorrectly or whatever, so you can get better at the end of the day. Yo, I will post, if you guys... You know, I'm not an edited guy. I don't know how to freaking edit these videos, man. I just, I got the knowledge of the sport. So if you guys edit your own, you can watch film. I want to see it and I'll post it on my channel. So you, I'm talking about like you edit some watching film kind of like I do. And it could be one-on-ones. It could be something like this. But I, I, I want to see how you guys critique it. And I'll post like one or two. Only one or two. Because I know a couple guys are doing it, watching it. So I, I'll post it, man. That's pretty good, man. I like seeing young fellas, you know, getting the hang of it and getting that feel. Because once you get that eye, once you get the eye for this, man, you won't be able to turn it off. <laughs> you'll be you'll never be a fan again. And that's my goal for you. I don't want you to be a fan. I want you to be a student of the game. Fans get emotional. You all notice that in the comments sometimes? I post a video about the Cleveland Browns, and you got fans, Cincinnati Bengals fans, saying, Man, you know, the, the Browns and this. I'm like, bro, I don't care. I don't care about the Browns. I don't care about the Giants. That's one thing you're going to learn in NFL. Guys go from team to team, man. You get cut. You get picked up. You get traded. There's no loyalty. Man, you play, man. And you play to be the best. All right? <laughs> the cats don't care about that stuff, man. Don't be a fan. Be a student of the freaking game. All right, fellas. Hit me up. Peace.